Hey, this is Thomas and today I will talk about properties in Swift. So this is a very basic but also very important topic. And I will start out by looking at an example. So we, de we define a class called circle and circle has an instance variable called radius of type double with default value zero. And now we can create an instance of circle and by using the instance, we can access radius and we can set it and we can also get it, for example, for printing it like this. So, so far so good. And uh, the thing is in Swift, every instance variable is automatically a property and in this case a so-called stored property. And this means uh, that you have property observers, two of them, and you can use them if you want to. And we will look first at the uh, did set observer. And this one is called after um, the property has become a, has get a new value and we can use it uh, for example to check whether the new value is uh, correct so we can say if radius is smaller than zero then that's not a valid value and we can reset it to the old value and as you can see i can access the old value by using uh, the variable old value and this is um, available inside the property observer. And now if I set the, the radius to minus 10, then you see uh, it will be set back to the old value and the old value in this case is zero because this is the default value. And if I use 10, then it's working as expected. And there's another uh, property observer you can use, and this is will set. And will set will be called before the new value is assigned. So for example, we can just print out about to assign the new value. And similar to accessing the old value in did set, you can access the new value by using um, new value and hit a play and you can see that about to assign the new value 10 is called and now we set it again to minus 10 and then you can see that he's about to assign the new value minus 10 but after it is set it will be reset to zero so this uh, this is a so-called stored property but there is another type of property and this is a stored pro um, a computed property. And the difference is a computed property uh, doesn't have a stored value. So each time you call a computed property, the value needs to be calculated. And in the class circle, um, you can define, for example, the property area as a computed property. And it looks like this. Again, um, it looks almost the same, but the difference is now that I defined a get um, block and this returns a value. So in this case, radius times the radius times pi is the area. And now if I print area, circle dot area you see that the area is indeed calculated and yeah this is very handy and a computed property always have to has a data and you don't even need um, uh, the, the um, get you can uh, just write this it's also working but uh, yeah, it's a little bit more cle uh, clearer if you, you're using this way. But it also can has a setter. And the setter doesn't really set um, the value of area because area 
doesn't have a value because it doesn't have a stored value, but instead you can um, use it to to do another thing. And in this case, it would make, uh, it would make sense to reset the radius. And for that, uh, we just calculate uh, the radius, double pi. And for this one, I need the foundation framework. And now, hopefully, if we set the uh, area to this value, then the radius should be 10. Mm, and there is still a problem new oh new area yeah new value so yeah and as you can see it's 9.999 so uh, yeah it's actually working okay that's about computed properties and now a little bit about initialization of stored properties mm. And for that, we will clean it up a little bit like this. And every stored property has to have a value after um, the instance has been created. So for example, uh, after circle has been created, radius has to have a value. And this means uh, this way it will not work. The compiler recognizes that radius doesn't have a value after the initialization. So um, yeah, it doesn't compile. And there are two ways you can uh, change this. Uh, the first way you has already seen, uh, I can just assign a default value like this and it's working. Or the other way is I can initialize it inside an init method. And for that, I have to define the init method and radio as a parameter. And now I can set radius. And for uh, of course, I have to set the radius here. And yeah, you will see this is working as well. So very important concept. Uh, every property has to have every stored property has to have a uh, value after the corresponding um, instance has been created. And now let's talk about lazy property. And if a stored property with a default value is marked with the keyword lazy, then its default value will not be um, initialized immediately but first when the property is called for the very first time. So if the property gets never called, it will never be initialized. And this is a very handy feature, for example, if the initialization is expensive in terms of memory or CPU usage. So uh, let's start out by using a new example, uh, just test class. And now we have a lazy, property called uh, test string and it has a default value of yeah, test string. So instance of test class and printing mm, the test class property. So Uh, you, you see it's working, but you, you doesn't see a difference to uh, without using uh, the keyword lazy. But in fact, uh, this string will first be, will only be created when you access the property. So after calling the property in this line, test string will be created. And we can make it a little bit more clear because in you can also define a block and inside the block, you can create the default value. And in this case, it's a test string. 
and we will also print something that is about to initialize the property and we will also um, define another property test string 2 and now we will also we will first print test string 2 and then test string tries and now you will see oops something is wrong <laughs> now it's working so you see um, first um, test string 2 is printed and then I call the property test string and then this block will be executed and this line will be printed and the second time the block is not called again because uh, it's only called the very very first time and you can see this reflected in the output. That's about uh, lazy properties. The next topic is type properties and type properties are part of, of a type but not of an instance and this is also known as a static property. And both stored and computed properties can be type properties. And I will show this at an example. So um, I will define a type property again test string, and I do this by using the keyword static. And now I don't exit this property by using an instance, but the type itself. So test class dot test string. And as you can see, it's working. And if I use an instance of a test class, then the following will not work. I cannot access the type property by using the instance. As you can see here, there will be a compiler error because static member test string cannot be used on instance of type test class. So that's about type properties. And the last um, topic I want to talk about is public properties with private setters and it's a very common scenario that you don't want to provide a public getter but a private setter and this is a basic principle of encapsulation and by doing this only the class itself can man uh, manipulate that property but can still be accessed and read from outside of the class and for this i will make again a circle example and we have a public, well, first it's public area of type double. And now I can say that the uh, setter is private by using this notation. And I will do the same for diameter. And I have a private function called calculate figures and area is double um, pi times radius times radius and we need of course uh, radius time type double and the diameter is two times pi times radius. 
And I will also provide an init method where I will set radius and call calculate figures. So now uh, area um, is can be uh, accessed from, from the outside, but only only be read, but it cannot be set. And for, to demonstrate this, I will create an instance again of circle with radius 10. And now I can actually print uh, area. Circle.area. And I can also print um, diameter. And let's see if it's working. It's not, but that's just a typo. So you see it's working as expected, but it's not possible to set area. You will see there will be a compiler error. Oh, but there's again a typo. It was the wrong compiler error. So, and here you can see it cannot assign to property area because the setter is inaccessible. And yeah, that's the behavior we want. Um, so uh, the properties area and diameter can be read from outside of the class, but only be set from inside the class. And in my experience, this feature is used very rarely in iOS development, but yeah, it's a, it's a very good feature. Okay, that's everything I wanted to talk about uh, cert, uh, about circles, <laughs> about properties. Um, if you like this uh, video, hit the subscribe button down below. Thanks for watching. Take care.